Hi, I'm Chris from Windows, and hey, you can do this. Did you hear it? Probably not, because this is Air Windows Elliptical. So this is by request. This is a essentially side channel low frequency filter. It's a high pass. And the thing about it is, turns out I was able to do a really good version by combining a variety of things. One of them is mid-side processing, but the other is a old plugin of mine called Hermipass. And that's from a ways back, honestly. But it turns out it's still good at doing extremely clean and controllable high passing. Now, how can you hear it? Well, check this out. Here's elliptical, but this is another plugin of mine called Golem. And Golem is to combine two channels into one. It's something that I'm going to be using for um, guitar sounds with uh, one mic channel and one channel that is a DI off of the speaker cabinet where I can get more low frequencies out of it because my ISO cab tends to, it lacks in low frequencies. It's a little bit too bright. Here's what Golem does. If I turn it on, let's uh, set it like this. All of a sudden it's mono. But the thing is, if you flip the phase, and instead of in mic, it's out mic, or indeed either, these settings will do the same things if everything's set to zero. And I might as well bring Golem to your attention in case it's useful, because you have access to this already, but you might not have noticed it was there. Balance is loudness of each channel being combined to mono, and offset delays either one or the other channels so that they sync up if you have something like an amp DI situation. But here what we have is my old Alien Kittens track, and it's a electronic sort of jam going on. In mono, we've got kick drums and things, but this is the side channel. So this is what you get when you apply elliptical. You notice we've got the lows, and then we've just got the side this is what you're supposed to be filtering, and this is what elliptical actually sounds like. You can take the lows right away from the side channel. It's a full-on elliptical EQ. If this is not a uh, steep enough angle for you, that's what the slope control is for. You can turn it right up. and it'll be a really aggressive high pass. Or you can move it just so that it takes only the lowest lows out. Like you can hear some of the drums there. But we can cut some of the deepest lows out without actually making it even noticeable, right? Like I can turn it, well, I can turn it off and it doesn't seem to change anything. And that's because Hermipass is uh, such a basic sort of filter. It's not even a, um, the thing isn't even a biquad filter. It's a series of uh, very simple IAR filters and they stagger. It's it, you can have many of them stacked up. It'll change the phase a great deal, but it will really tend to avoid adding weird resonances to anything. So what you get is the ability to cut lows, or here I'll put them back. That's the side channel. Or I'll take them back out again and that's removing extreme lows. 
You can remove them even more aggressively if you want, or you can back slope off a little bit to have it not be as aggressive. But then when you stop having Golem on, it'll sound like you didn't do a thing. And I'll turn elliptical off. And we'll turn it back on. See, I can crank it up even more. It takes a lot to make you notice anything's being done. And I can turn uh, Golden back on again. And you can hear. That is some pretty substantial high passing without actually hearing it doing anything like that. See, that's the trick with a really good elliptical EQ. This is not designed to be a, whoa, listen to that amazing EQ effect. An elliptical EQ is used in vinyl mastering, and it also has usefulness in for instance, music that is meant to go to a big club or whatever, if you have multiple subwoofers and they are stereo subwoofers, for instance. And if you have stereo subwoofers, they need to be pushing in the same direction because get down to a low enough frequency and no matter how big a room it is or how far apart the speakers are, they will end up fighting each other if they're out of phase. That's why we do elliptical EQs, apart from the obvious reasons of if you're mastering to vinyl and you don't want the needle jumping out of the groove, you need to have it be parallel to the record surface. But again, the use with um, subwoofers is also relevant. Or uh, bass in stereo speakers that don't have subwoofers. Often you'll have a mono subwoofer and that will automatically only take the mono bass. But if you're using stereo speakers and they're not a mono subwoofer and your extreme lows are sitting around being out of phase, that is just, I mean, technically it's not only unproductive as far as producing sound pressure level, but in a sense, you might also worry about having the uh, speakers be pushing and pulling each other. They're acting like an isobaric enclosure or something. And that'll drop the uh, impedance of the speaker because the air pressure in the room is pulling it the other direction. And so it would make it more easy to blow the speaker. That's going some. That's not actually going to happen. But those who would like a elliptical EQ, this is now for you. It is, like all the rest of my stuff, free and open source software. So technically, somebody could have built this simply by looking up the Hermipass high pass filter and using it in a mid side context, because that's all this is. Hermipass exists as well. This is not the same as the filter in uh, two vinyl. That one is built in to automatically, I, I had somebody talking to me about how they were concerned that using two vinyl caused some of their low frequency stuff to peak higher. And that's because it always has a filtering built into it and it'll cross over at 10 Hertz if it's not otherwise engaged. Point being, this is again by request. I was asked for a good elliptical EQ, and I think this nails it. It's also given me ideas for things like my dream to be able to produce a dub plate plugin where people who are really fond of the final heyday of vinyl in, say, drum and bass and dubstep music when stuff was being played out in clubs and people wanted dub plates. I'd like to be able to bring that sound into a simple, like no controls, just drop it on and have the same basic sound that you'd get out of a dub plate um, because that was essentially a production line 
when dub plates in the UK were in their heyday, a lot of them were being done out of a single place, and it was just a production line. You'd run in there, they would have everything all set up, you'd run your electronic music through, and you get your dub plate out the end, and it wasn't being fussed over endlessly each time. It ran very quickly. That is a perfect candidate for making a plugin where it's just a single plugin, you drop it on your output bus, and you're good. That is ideally what I'd be able to do. So I'm going to be asking some of my uh, UK friends if they have good examples of that kind of stuff. Probably it'll be in the form of uh, mixtapes and things that happen to have been done with just loads of dub plates from that era. And that'll be enough for me to work on because I can run those through Air Windows Golem as well and listen to the out of phase and that will tell me what the preset needs to be. And I'll also be using uh, not acceleration as is found in Air Windows 2 Vinyl, but probably the stuff that I came up with in the more recent plugin mastering that's better at just hard clamping high frequency stuff because it's going to be like that as well. That's also going to be a characteristic of dub plates is that they will be very careful not to blow up their lathes and so there's going to be a lot of processing in there and I should be able to duplicate that. And yeah, that's basically what we've got for today is Air Windows Elliptical. I hope that it ends up being a big deal. If you're eager for me to continue onwards and do that like single plug-in, no controls, just gives you dub plate sound in the idealized optimal way, um, hey, you could do worse than jumping on my Patreon and helping me keep doing all this stuff. It's looking pretty good, honestly. I'm doing well compared to like the rest of the plug-in industry at the moment. Which is not to say that I make more money. Most people in the plugin industry make a lot more money than me, but um, things are reasonably steady, and I'm able to continue doing this work thanks to you, if you were jumping on my Patreon before. That's something that I really appreciate. And I will uh, log off because I have multiple videos to make today because I have been talking with Yale Techs and they have that Air Windows Console X controller is now available. So I have a video to make for that. It, I don't know whether I'm going to have to flag it as a product, product or not because um, I don't get anything from them. In fact, you might actually be getting it for cheaper than I did, which is completely fine. I am just a customer of those folks. But that's for another video. So for now, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.